Right? Are you ready um, to activate what you've heard today? I mean, the speakers today and the videos have been absolutely awesome, and there's so many things percolating in my mind. I mean, I have tons of questions. And I imagine, like you, you're ready to put some of that stuff to work. Yeah? What I want okay. to talk to you today um, is about something you've already heard about, right? And even today, there have been kernels of that um, percolating. Now, it's a word that you will instantly recognize when I say it. And over the past year, my students have heard a lot more about it from me. And the women and students connected with the Hot Mamas Project all know about this and its importance to our success. And that's mentoring, right? I'm seeing the head nods, right? How many of you have had a conversation about mentoring any time in the past 12 months? Raise your hands, okay? <laughs> right, we're talking, we're hearing a lot about mentoring these days. Top universities and companies are creating formal programs around mentoring. Did you ever wonder why that is? Why is mentoring such a big deal? Well, today we're going to unravel the mystery. Right? We're going to understand how mentoring can help us close the gap between women and power, in that space between women and power. You're going to leave here today understanding how you can impact the lives of anywhere from one to 100 women and girls, possibly even more. And we've already seen those examples in some of the film clips that we've, we saw earlier today. Right? Now that's our focus at the Hot Mamas Project. Right? And we're out of um, George Washington School of Business at the Center for Entrepreneurial Excellence. Now Hot Mamas is a funny word. And when I first heard about the project, I thought, wow, this is really interesting and it sounds great, except one problem. I'm not a mama. I have no kids, <laughs> right? But then I learned that Hot Mamas is really about dynamic women and dynamic women helping others, right? We're housed at, our research is housed at the George Washington School of Business and because most of our women are entrepreneurs, we're under the mission of the Center for Entrepreneurial Excellence. So whenever you hear the words Hot Mama, think dynamic women, okay? Now, when I first learned about the theme for our talks today, the space between, and in particular for TEDx Mass Avenue, the space between women and power, my first thoughts went to a conversation I had with a friend a few weeks ago about her four-year-old daughter, Kaya. Now, Kaya is an impressive little girl. And they have lots of great conversations. And in one conversation in particular, Kaya asked her mom, are there any other cartoon princesses? So they reviewed the part cartoon princesses out there, and Kaya asked, are there any others? And her mom said, no, that's it, why? Kaya's response was, I think I need to create a new princess. And her mom said, okay, um, you wanna create a new princess. Would you like to be a princess? And Kaya said, no, I don't need to be a princess. I'm perfect all by myself. Right? And when I heard that, it was one, classic Kaya. And two, I actually said aloud, where does she get that from? Where does she get that confidence? She's four years old and Kaya has always had a strong sense of herself. Right? Were you like Kaya when you were a little girl? Kind of, right? Why aren't we all like that? conditioned, right? One of the things that's sad is that even if we were like that when we were little, it seems to go away. And I've been fascinated by Kaya because she's made me wonder, where does that go? Where does that confidence go? Right? And there's actually some research on this. And it's called self-limiting behavior. Right? and research on self-limiting behavior when it comes to women and girls. Now we could have a whole TED talk on self-limiting behavior and we have lots of conversations on the problem. But today I actually want to focus on a solution that's available to each of us, okay? So as we talk today, I want to give you an assignment. 
By the end of my talk today, I want you to identify one woman and one girl in your life for whom you're going to make a mentoring connection when you leave. Okay. Now, one of the things I'm going to talk about here today, we're going to talk about women where we are and mentoring, why that is such a big deal. And then we're going to talk about the connection between support and success. Okay. So where are we today as women? The bottom line is women are the global economic engine. Right? Countries are boosting GDP by focusing on women entrepreneurs. Fortune 500 companies that have programs to promote women into executive positions are more profitable. And women make the majority of the purchasing decisions within households. And nationally here, women make up the majority of college and graduate programs. Right? And as you've heard from some of the presentations earlier, women are succeeding. But we also know that women and adolescent girls engage in what some call self-limiting behavior. For instance, women are more likely to limit career choices due to confidence. And this is rooted in perception. Right? All of us in our lives have frames of reference. We have blinders, if you will. And when we talk about perception, we're talking about narrow versus broad blinders. Right? So think about it. How do you see the world? We can see the world from here, or we can see the world from here. Kaya sees the world from here. Right? Confidence broadens how we see the world and enhances our perception of success in it. Right? And what we're interested in is how to build that confidence in women and girls. Mentorship, then, is a very practical way we can begin to eradicate self-limiting behavior. Right? That's why mentoring is a big deal. And I'm going to talk about some more interesting things about mentoring more generally and come back to the power it can have in women's lives. Right? So mentoring is a big deal. One of the things that we found and this is not just our research, but across the board, is that people with mentors have higher salaries and attain higher positions. Right? In our research, we've been interested in what number of mentors makes the difference. And what we found is that women with five or more mentors have a 20% higher perception of confidence and success. That's why companies and universities are creating mentoring programs. But what's the real insight here? It's not just about having a mentor, as in a formal mentor. It's about the support that comes from having a mentoring relationship and how that support enhances perceptions of confidence and success. So what we're talking about here and remember this with your assignment, what we're talking about here is helping women and girls tap into that power by having access to mentors and role models. Okay. There's a saying out there, if you can't see it, you can't be it. Right. So mentoring is empowering. Now, personally, when I started hearing about this research, it emboldened me. As a young professor, it made me want to more actively seek out mentors. And immediately, with my undergraduate and graduate TAs, I wanted to make sure they knew about this as well. I wanted to equip them for when they leave the university. Right? Our research at the Hot Mamas Fam Project excuse me, has found that mentoring connections are critical to women's success and that it, it limits or reduces self-limiting behavior. 
And as I said before, what we found is that there's a 20% higher perception of confidence and success for women with five or more mentors. Right. Now, what I'm about to say, we all know, but it bears highlighting. Right? At the heart of mentoring relationships is the support. And this makes sense. As human beings, we're social beings. We thrive in community. We thrive in relationship. We thrive from the support we give to one another. And the support isn't one directional. right? Even as we give, we gain. And mentors themselves say that they gain and learn from the people that they're investing in as well. And there's so much for us to learn as mentors. So I want to probe a little more to this idea of support. What we have found is that mentors in the place where we spend most of our time has a huge impact. We did an in-depth survey of successful women, and we asked them an open-ended question. Identify the number one thing that's helping you, quote, have it all. Overwhelmingly, support systems was what these women identified. 48% said that it's having a supportive partner that's the key to their success. 27% said it's having a supportive workplace. And another 23% said that it was workplace balance. Now when we probe their anecdotal responses, we see reinforced there that it's having supportive systems that has been key to their success. And this is really powerful. Firstly, as a culture, we tend to elevate successful individuals. We tend to celebrate them. But have you ever noticed that when asked about their achievements, successful people credit the people in their lives for their success? Similarly, these successful women are saying themselves that they want, they welcome, and they thrive on support. And indeed, that they need it for their continued success. It's pivotal to their success. Right. So the bottom line here is that mentors matter. And the question for us to ask is, are we going to play that role for someone else? Right. Remember Kaya, that four-year-old who has no need to be a princess because she's perfect all by herself, right? What we want to do is to multiply the kayas. And mentoring has a multiplying effect. The person you help is going to do something small or big, right? But they're going to go and help someone else, maybe even 100 other people you don't know. Right? You have no idea how huge an impact you can have. But you do know one way you'll have no impact at all. And that's by never having the conversation in the first place. So go back to that assignment. I asked you to identify one woman and one girl for whom you're going to make a mentoring connection. In this day and age, it's easier than ever to connect with people. We have so many vehicles for communication. Facebook and social media, other social media outlets like Twitter. And yes, you can even pick up the phone. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I actually heard a survey that said that young people today don't wear watches because they use their cell phones to keep time. And to me, that means I can pick up the phone and call them because they have their phone on them. <laughs> right? Now, we're here in D.C., and D.C. is my hometown. I was born and raised in Adams Morgan back when it was hippie, more hip, hippie than hip, right? And we're a, we're a power city. We're a city of high achievers, people of influence, right? We're the ones who tend to drive the agenda. We're in control. And what I'm talking about today is taking that control and putting it on pause a remote control, if you will, and turning off the TV, some of the noise. 
and turning to the person next to you and simply asking, how can I help you? You'll be amazed at what will happen. So now we know that mentors matter. We know that mentoring connections provide support that enhances people's perception of success, the perception of their confidence. And we know that mentoring is a practical way that we can begin to eradicate self-limiting behavior in women and adolescent girls. So the question then is, are you going to make that connection for someone today? Thank you very much for the opportunity.